bunch of hands to heaven. Say, Lord, Lord we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Oh, y'all don't sound like it. Say it one more time. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, appreciate I appreciate you. You may be seated. Has God been good to us, y'all? Yes. How many of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving? Yes. Amen. Okay, that sounds like y'all had a kind of wonderful. How many of you put on some extra weight from the turkey and the ham and the and all the food that you ate, the cakes? How many of you are still eating Thanksgiving food? Oh, wow. Y'all are still eating Thanksgiving food. Wow. Well, the Lord is good. He is what? To, listen, you know what? I, I have to say this. I have to admit this. You know, I thought Friday was Tuesday. <laughs> Anybody picked up on that except my wife? Y'all realize that? Amanda's, I thought Friday was Tuesday. So when I was going home, my wife said, you know today is Friday, right? <laughs> she said, I was trying to make a sign for you to know that. Because how many of you picked? Because I was saying questions. But tonight is Tuesday. <laughs> so you know what they say in the islands when your days get mixed up? Who, 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 who knows what they say in the islands? They say you have to be living good. Where they say you got to be living good when you don't know which day it is. So I must be living good. Amen. So that is that. Come on, clap your hand and give God a praise. I really thought Friday. <laughs> I know my wife is at home laughing at me. Listen, I want to say this to everybody. A lot of people went out of town Thanksgiving and the coronavirus is picking up. So because of that, we are asking everybody to get tested. We're asking that we may do a few changes in the service where we, well, I, I'm still praying about how to do it because we want to have church. But how many of you know we want to be safe while we do it? Okay, three, y'all, because we do have children, so we want to be safe while we are having church. So we want everybody to please, please make sure you staying up on your health. Keep your mask on so that we can be safe. Amen? amen. Look at somebody say Amen. And so it doesn't have to be here, but it, it, when people travel from out of town, you go around persons, and they came back. We had a young lady that visited from out of town, and she came up COVID-19. She was visiting, and we, we sent her no symptoms, but we just wanted to be safe, and, 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 and she came up positive. She said she had no, no, nothing, no, nothing. And she had to, re and because of that, you know, we couldn't allow her to come to service because of it. So we want, we want to keep our, our atmosphere healthy. Amen. So this was no one here, but they went out of town and they came to visit with family and friends and they wanted to come to services. So we had to get things and make sure things were going properly. And when they, they were absolutely shocked that they had the coronavirus, because how many of you know, you don't have to show signs to have it. Only Ms. Carolyn here. So you can be perfectly thinking you're healthy and you don't need to do anything so good to see my sister came tonight. Boy, that's right, boy. You truck your way. And she know I'm talking to her. So I want everybody to stay healthy. Lift your hands if you're going to stay healthy. So I want you to know my, I had people over to my house on Sunday. And as a result of having people over on Sunday, I told everybody in my house just to keep things real. M my wife went to stay safe. Uh, 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 Joey went. So everybody just wants to stay safe because you don't know who with people bringing. So you want to be safe. Amen? Look at somebody and say, be safe. be safe. Amen. We don't want nobody dying before their time. And then we can't get sick and say, Lord, heal me when we were careless. So we want to do our best to stay safe. So I would challenge everyone in here. How many of you got tested in the last week? Raise your hands. Good. That's very good. How many of you got tested in the last two weeks? How many of you have never been tested? Raise them high. You want, just for safety reasons, I'm telling you, Jess, I know you feel good, but it don't always have to just be you. You could be somebody that you're around, and, and, and because some of us are so healthy, otherwise... Look at Jerome is just listening. That's a detective. Jerome is a police, y'all. I want y'all to know. And because people are healthy otherwise, you may have a high immune system and not know that you can actually be, be um, what they call it? A asymptomatic. Thank you. So please be safe. Please what? So we can continue our services. Amen? How many of you like coming to church? Good. There are a lot of churches that are not open, y'all, and we don't fault them. You know, safety first, people first. So we want to, we applaud them, but we choose to have our church. I choose to still assemble together, but we do it in safety. We have people that are taking temperatures at the door. If your temperature is 99 and a half, it won't do. Amen? Look at somebody say, 99 and a half won't do. 
So if you come 99 and a half, we send you back home. Amen. Because we're trying to keep people safe. Uh, Chris went out of town. Raise your hand, Chris. Chris went out of town, and when he came back, y'all, he went to New York or Penn. Where did you go? He went to Pennsylvania, and he said he told everybody, you know, I can't. He kept his so he kept his six feet distancing, and I saw him today. I said, Chris, I said you got to go get tested. He said, Bishop, I got my papers right here. He said, <laughs> he said I got tested. I'm negative. Amen. So he did that to keep safe. So we want to be safe. Is that all right? So I want to let's please, because it's easy to let your guards down. It's easy to, it's so easy to let your guards down, get comfortable and think, well, I'm feeling good. It's okay. So just do it. And the test isn't bad like it used to be in the beginning. In the beginning, they would take the Q-tip and put it straight up your nose. And I, that was so uncomfortable to me. Anybody else? Yeah, they would put it straight up your nose. And then they took the, now they take it and they just rub it around the inside, like rub it inside, but they don't put it way up. Like they're trying to reach your brain. So it's, it's better. What is it? Better. It's better. It's really better. So I really want to encourage you. Let's clap our hands one more time and give God a praise. So tonight is Tuesday night. So tonight is what? So I didn't get that wrong, Amanda. Tonight is Tuesday night. And you have a, a chance and an opportunity to ask questions on a Tuesday night because that's how you grow. I want to encourage everyone that's here tonight, stay in God. You don't fail living for God. I can't say it enough. That's not just an amen. You don't fail living for God. If you live for God, just like there's reward from your parents, God will reward you in this life, not just when you get to heaven, even in the next life. Somebody said, well, I don't always do things right, and I don't deserve to be in the house of God. But I want to I wanna say that to somebody. I want to kill that. Can I do, kill it? Let me ki Thank you, Miss, Miss Carolyn. Let me kill that. Christ didn't die for us when we did right. He died for us while we were sinners. When? You got to hear that. So don't let the, the devil is a liar. And he will lie to you so that you won't get the benefits of the kingdom. So don't feel because you are battling or because you got struggles or because you fail that you're not, this Christianity thing isn't for you. It's a lie to take you out because Satan knows once you're in covering, you're protected. So don't let him play those games. If he starts to play games with you, find somebody that is in the faith who can encourage your faith. We need each other. What we need? We need each other. I want to talk tonight, y'all, about the Holy Spirit. And I really want, to, want y'all to think about questions that you may ask pertaining to him so that you will understand that he is real. He's not a, a fragment of our imagination. I can't talk about him enough. I can't do him justice. But my little bit of teaching, y'all, there's so much more that, to him, so much more to him. I did not come from a background, y'all, where I learned about the Holy Spirit. My church background was Anglican. So as a little boy, my mother would send us to the Anglican church when we grew up in West End. She would send us to the Anglican church called Christ the King. How many of you ever heard of an Anglican faith? Raise your hands if you've ever heard of the Anglican churches. Raise them high. The Anglican, yeah. In the Anglican church growing up, we're not taught about the Holy Spirit. You're not taught about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're not ta taught about speaking in tongues or the gifts of the Spirit like prophesying or or healing of the sick, or discernment, or you're not taught the gifts of the Spirit. You may hear Holy Spirit, you know, and mark the cross and the different things, rituals, but never the, the person of the Holy Spirit. Again, it's Bible study, so you don't just have to sit down. If I say something, or you may have a question pertaining to him, you can ask tonight. When I came to knowledge of the Holy Spirit, y'all, I was 14. I accepted Christ at 11, but I came to the knowledge of the Holy Spirit when I was 14, because I went to an Assemblies of God background. And Assemblies of God Church, they basically teach from Genesis to Revelation, like the full gospel. If you ever hear Assemblies of God or Pentecostal, we teach the full gospel. They believe in the Holy Spirit. They believe in the gifts of the Spirit. They believe in speaking in tongues, healing, discernment, uh, prophecy, uh, interpretation of tongues. They believe in the gifts of the Spirit. So when I went to the Assemblies of God Church for the first time, I shared a little bit about this, and I'm sharing a little bit again tonight. I received Christ, and then the, ne the same night I received Christ, the young people came to me in the church, and they said, we're going to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. I didn't know what they were talking about. I, really, I promise you I didn't know. My brother's here, so he could tell you, we grew up in Eindlick, and we didn't know number no Holy Spirit like that. So when I went to church the next night, I had told my friend in school I didn't want to receive the Holy Spirit because I didn't know what it was. I said, let me take my time and learn before uh, what the Holy Spirit is, what speaking in tongues is. And so when I went the next night, it was a Wednesday night, 
And then Thursday night, because they had brought in a visiting evangelist from America, and he, was, he came over and he was preaching, so they were having a week of services. So my first night was going that Wednesday, and then that Thursday, they, was, they said, we're going to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. When I went to service, they all, after the service, they all came and they said, time to pray, Duran. And I'm, I'm right now, and I'm terrified because I don't know about the Holy Spirit. So they're telling me to pray. So they, all the young people gathered around me, and then they started praying in this language. Now, keep in mind, no one never took me to the Bible, showed me the book of Acts. No one ever taught me like I'm teaching you. This just was, and they telling me to pray. So I'm like, pray what? No, I don't know. I'm just introduced to this. I'm 14, and they telling me pray, and I'm like, pray what? So they started to pray around me, and they, as they, I heard them praying, I said five words, and they're like, yeah, that's it, that's it. I don't know if they was excited more than me, but they were like, that's it. And I'm thinking while they telling me and cheering me on that that's it, I'm thinking to myself, what is it? I'm thinking to myself that I'm repeating what I heard somebody saying. Anybody ever had that battle? Okay, y'all ain't with me, but whoever, let's ride. So I thought, I thought to myself, Deron, you know you're just repeating. I didn't tell them this. I was like just smiling it off. But I thought to myself I was just repeating what I heard somebody else said. So I went home, and when I went home, I began to talk to the Lord in prayer. And I said, God, I feel like, like I'm faking. I didn't tell my mother that because she wasn't saved at the time. I didn't tell my brothers that they wasn't saved. No one was around. And I said, God, I feel like I'm faking. I feel like I'm repeating what somebody else said. But I still would say the five words. Only five words came to me. So I still would just say the five words. But one day, like I said, I went to church with my mother. And my mother heard me say this funny language. And being from an Anglican background, she's like, she, when we went home, she's like, what that is you said? I said, Mom, that's speaking in tongues. <laughs> I didn't know the scriptures to really tell her. So she said, speaking in tongues, you know, from an eye looking background. She said, boy, that's a devil language. And I thought she didn't know because we wasn't raised like that. That was her. She wasn't raised like that. And she, she know, how could my son be speaking this? And I never taught him this. So I still would pray the language. And I went to church one night on a Friday night. And we were worshiping in youth service. And as we were worshiping, I just began to cry out to the Lord. And I spoke out loud. When I spoke out loud, Pastor Coco, the entire church went quiet, and then someone interpreted in English what I said. And then the president of the U group came to me, and they said, do you know what just happened? I said, no. They said, you spoke in tongues, and somebody brought the interpretation. I said, what? And then they took me to 1 Corinthians 14 about when you speak in tongues, and then someone interprets. And then the Holy Spirit began to stir up with me, you know, that I had the gift of the Holy Spirit because the words had begun to change that I was praying. So those five words began to become more fluent. The words begin to change. And then I begin to exercise it more, meaning that I begin to pray. I begin to flow in it because my relationship with God began to grow. I want to encourage everyone in this room, any time that you feel something is not real or something you don't understand, something, talk to God about it. Like in the shower, uh, in your bed, before you go to sleep, say, God, reveal to me it's real. Show me it's real. Lord, uh, uh, give me more of your spirit. Tell him. Don't just let your mind play games and don't be afraid to talk. One of the reasons I hear Holy Spirit that you don't want to be afraid to talk is because the Holy Spirit is a person. Not person as flesh and blood, but person as feelings. He can be grieved. Person as he can speak back. Person as that... He can lead you. He can got he, 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 keyword he. And anytime Jesus described the Holy Spirit, he never described him as an it. He never described him as a force. He described him as a person with a personality. With a what? So again, I don't have to just say, and you sit in the room and just take it. You could ask questions. So he doesn't describe him as some force in the air. Some religions will describe the Holy Spirit as an, a force. Like, 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 like some energy. They won't describe him as a person who whispers or a person that will give you joy or a person that comforts. These are the, the way that the Holy Spirit is described in the Bible. He's described as somebody that leads. He's described as somebody that guides. He's described as a person that comforts. So these are personalities or, or characteristics of the Spirit of God. So he, he is described. So tonight, I want you to know that when we are as believers, we're not alone. You have the Holy Spirit that lives in you. So let's say I, I have used the Holy Spirit many times where I would say, Holy Spirit, show me what to say. Show me what to speak. When I came to church tonight, I began to pray in tongues. We can talk about that tonight. Because I wanted a mind on what to say. 
a lot of time people say bishop you preach the right message that is not me that's the holy spirit i rely on him so i say holy spirit show me what to say show me what's in the room show me what to speak on so the holy spirit will lead me he would begin to show me like confirm through his word or or a lot of times you would know the holy spirit is working like you can't shake it like it's something you it'll come back to you you can't shake it it doesn't leave you like he he, he will keep give you that continual nudging he will not force you the personality of the holy spirit is he doesn't force he leads what he does he will not force you. So he won't make you do anything. He will never make you. People talk about, I couldn't help myself. The Holy Spirit is not that. He is a perfect gentleman. So anytime, one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit is he's gentle. What is he? He's gentle. The first time we see him in the gospel was when the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. So that will show you that one of the personalities of the Holy Spirit, or part of his personality, I should say, is that he is a gentle spirit. So he'll never make you, he'll never drive you, he'll never force you, he will nudge you, and he will lead you. And I thank God for that, because he, you, you, you will know the difference. The devil forces you. The devil drives you. That's a, that's a demonic force. But the Holy Spirit, he, he will nudge you. He will, he, 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 he will draw you. Yes, Lord. Or he will lead you, but he'll never just grab you by the hand and say, I'll force you to come. Or I'll make you pray. Or dance until you leap over every chair and, and, and totally out of control. That is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. What is he? Is a gentleman. So when you see people jumping all over the place and, and, and clothes going all over the place, and you got to watch that. What you got to do? You have to watch that. It does, it, you, because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, there's the best way for me to say that, is the Spirit is subject to the prophet so don't let that be just say that and you don't understand what that means hear that the spirit is subject to the prophet now that's in simple terms Ms. Sherry that means he will never make you do something he is subject to you he is subject to you so that means when he comes he ain't gonna take your mouth over and make you speak he will put the words in your spirit but it's up to you to open your mouth and speak he will lead you into a place. He will give you the word. He will give you the impression. He will impress on you a word. He will impress on you a, 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 something to tell somebody, but he'll never make you tell the person. So he, he will comfortly, and, 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 like a gentleman, nudge you uh, and speak to you and draw you. But if you don't do it, he will retreat. He will recant. It's why the Bible says, quench not the Holy Spirit. Because the more you don't be, become obedient to him, the less you hear his voice. So the more you're not obedient to his leading, the more you're not obedient to what he tells you to do, the less his voice becomes less and less. But the more you do it, is the more he will reaffirm himself. It's the more you will recognize this is the Holy Spirit telling me to do this right now. Another that thing that you would know, whoever this is for, how you would know it's the Holy Spirit is, it's something that you wouldn't normally do, but he will give you the boldness to do it. So it'll be something outside of your character. He'll tell you to speak to someone, be like, Lord, I don't want to speak to someone, and be like, Lord, what do I say? And as you go, the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. He'll make it easier. So that's how you know that he's working. So somebody say, well, I'm a shy person. It's okay to be shy because the Holy Spirit lives in you, so he'll give you boldness. Anybody see that? So it's okay to say, I don't know what to say. If you had the Holy Spirit in you, he will give you the words to say. So when people say, I don't know what to say, you're relying on yourself more than the Holy Spirit. When people say, I'm shy, you're relying more on yourself than the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit likes shy personalities because the more you shy is the more he can shine. Clap your hand and give God praise if you understand that. So let's go into John chapter 16. John 16. If you have, if you have never prayed in tongues in this room, you want to pray in tongues. And I hear the Lord saying this. And if you have prayed in tongues, you don't want to pray the same language. You want your prayer language to change. So if you, be, you want to watch your prayer language in prayer. Watch that you're not saying the same words. And don't try to practice different words. As you go deeper in prayer, trust me, your words will change. As you go deep in prayer and you begin to cry, it'll come from your bellies. The words will change. It was not something that happened in mind. As you go deep in prayer and as you seek the Lord, your words will automatically shift. I've heard you, you, sometimes you may even sound like you're praying in Chinese. Sometimes you may feel like you're praying in an African language. Sometimes you may feel like you're praying in French. And you, you will know when you shift in your prayer language. Let me ask you this. How many of you ever were praying in tongues before and heard your language shift? Raise, oh, some of you are raising like, hi, 
That is, that's, so that is a witness, y'all, that I'm not just saying that. So when you pray, your languages will shift. The deeper you go. It don't have to be something in your mind that you practice. When you go deep in prayer and you begin to cry out to the Lord, your language will shift. People will tell you tongues are not real. That's not true. This is a, people say, are y'all a tongue-talking church? Look at somebody and say, yes, we are. That's what gives us power. I have been praying in tongues, y'all. For anybody in this room that is doubting, have a question. I've been praying in tongues for 14 to now. That's over, that's, that's, that's a long time. I've been praying in tongues. And I'm going to tell you tongues work. I don't know what church has told you. I don't know who might have told you. I don't know what your background is. I didn't have a tongue speaking background. I, might, I was just like a lot of people who didn't believe who did because I wasn't taught I didn't know I wanted more of God I sought God as I sought God then God began to reveal more to me so I will tell you based on my experience and based on the word that tongues is real and there are reasons why you want to pray in tongues because how many of you ever was praying in English and just ran out of what to say no only me okay only me and Tisha the rest of y'all y'all always pray in English that's why you have a five minute prayer that's why some of y'all only pray for two minutes and don't know what else to say. Because you're not baptized with, in the Holy Spirit with heaven and speaking in tongues. Tongues will help you pray longer. It will help you stay in prayer. It will help your prayer go longer. You'll be in prayer, be like, Lord, did I pray that long? An hour, and a, sometimes when I'm in prayer, an hour and an hour and a half gone, I'll be like, it felt like five, ten minutes. It didn't feel like I was on my knees that long. Sometimes I could be in prayer three, four hours, and it didn't feel like, and I'm not saying that to brag, and it didn't feel like three, four hours, because I'm just praying in tongues. And the more I pray in tongues, the, and I, if I come in English, then the Lord will show me what to pray for. He will show me whether I need to pray for family, whether I need to pray for church. And that's another thing, too. Y'all are looking, I hope y'all are thinking of questions. When you pray in tongues, and you come in English, you would know whether you need to pray for family. You would know whether you need to pray for mother. You would know whether you need to pray for healing. The, the, the Holy Spirit will bring in to, to you what you need to pray. The Holy Spirit will bring to you what you need to focus on. So that is another reason why you want to pray in tongues. Because the Holy Spirit prays a perfect prayer. He knows what you have need of. Because where, where does he live? He li Y'all got to hear it. He lives on the inside of you. So he knows what you need to pray for. Nobody knows you better than the Holy Spirit. So he knows what to pray to the Father on your behalf. So you want to believe God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And it gives you strength. It gives you strength. I went into, count and, and the reason why I can speak on this, because like I said, I was speaking in tongues from 14 to now, and I came from a background that didn't, was not tongue. So if, I could, if anybody can give credence that it's real, it's me. Because, I, because of the years of experience of praying in tongues, and because I didn't come from a background, so I experienced him for myself, and nobody could take it away from me. So I know he is real. Amen? John 16 and 13. So much that I could say. The Bible says, and are you in John 16 and 13? When you're there, you can say amen. Okay, that's three, y'all. Let the rest turn in there. John 16 and verse 13. So speaking in tongues is, I would say, very necessary. You want to be able to pray in tongues. You want to be able, if you're in this room and you're not praying in tongues, you want God to give you that gift. And if you are in this room and you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, you want to constantly, whether you get in your car sometimes. Let me ask this. How many of you ever got in your car by yourself and rather than cutting on the music, straight from church to home, just prayed in tongues? If you practice it, do it. Like if you're going for a long drive in your car, rather than just listening to the music, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. You'll be surprised what ideas will come. You'll be surprised how, how protection will come. You'll be surprised how God will download messages or show you what you need to do or show you something that you might have forgotten and bring it back to your remembrance. So use quiet time in the shower pray in tongues. When you're laying in bed sometimes and you're not, you can't sleep, just lay there and begin to pray in tongues. You'll be surprised the poems that he will give you. You'll be surprised the songs that he will give you. You'll be surprised the book titles that he will give you. You'll be surprised what he will download to you, the ideas of, of the choreography what you could do with songs what you could do inside a church more you will be how you can make the ministry better if you just really fellowship what that is called I hear you Lord is fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit 
It's called fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Who's in the boot? If you're in the boot, who's that in the boot? That's one of the kids. 16 and 13. Are you there? Let's go. Let's read 16 and verse 13. How be it when he, when who? So you see that that's not a force. That's a what? A person. It said he? How be it when he, the spirit of truth. Another thing is, I like that. The Holy Spirit is truth. So when you hear the word truth, that means he can't lie. So a lot of times people want to know what direction should I take? Where should I go? Am I making the right decision? Uh, should I make the right turn? The Holy Spirit, his job, you, what you have to know, is, is a part of who he is, is he is truth. So a part of having him live inside of you, he has to lead you into truth. He can't lead you wrong. So it was a, how do you know you're making the right decision? The Holy Spirit's job is to lead you in truth. So if he lives inside of you, he has to direct you to truth. He won't lead you wrong. He won't let you make the wrong decisions, especially if you're listening to him. Especially, and the thing I love about the Holy Spirit is, he is so good, is that even if you make the wrong decision, he will put somebody around you who's spiritually matured to help guide you until you get more familiar. Almost like a child. When somebody's a child, children don't know how to make the right decisions all the time, but we're in their life to help do what? To help guide, to help protect them. And as they get older, then they learn how to make the right decisions for themselves. So God will put people around you who will be there spiritually mature to help guide you and help bring some of that protection so until you learn to develop a mature relationship with the Holy Spirit to yourself. So he, somebody say, he is truth. That's, that, you need to hear that. He can't lead you wrong. So one of the things about his personality is say, he is truth. I like that. The Bible says, you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak of. One of the other jobs of the Holy Spirit is, people say, I have the Holy Spirit. If somebody have the Holy Spirit, they point you to Jesus. They don't point you to themselves. So the Holy Spirit job is to reveal Christ. It's good to know what his job is. When you know what his job is, then nobody could come and tell you differently because you know First of all, he doesn't force. So if you see somebody, if you felt something trying to force you or make you be like this in God. One other thing is, he, does, he can't lie. He's a truthful spirit. What is he? Everything about him is truth. He can't lie. And another thing I hear you, God, is that he, he comes to reveal Jesus. So he comes to make Jesus real. He doesn't boast of himself. He doesn't speak of himself. He reveals Jesus. He makes Christ more real to you. He makes the scriptures alive. I want to share this. I had to take a test one time when I went to theology school. And I knew the answers to this test. But when I was taking this test, my mind just went blank. Anybody mind ever went blank on a test? My mind just went blank. And I knew, I knew the answer. And I just stopped and I said, Holy Spirit, I need you to bring this back. Just like that. That's how you have to learn to talk to him. I say, Holy Spirit, you need to, I say, I need you to bring this back to me. I stop. How many of you know the Holy Spirit just begin to download? He just began to download. And when I got, when I was finished with that test, I got, I got an, a 90 something on that test and the Holy Spirit just began to give me the answers. I, like, oh, it, I mean, it just began to click. So if we listen to the Holy Spirit, his job is to lead. His, God is, his job is to remind you. His job is to comfort. People who say, I'm lonely. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. And that's why you got to learn to fellowship with him. That's why you got to learn to talk with him. That's why you got to learn to say, Holy Spirit, reveal the scriptures. Give me understanding. Make the word truth. And then the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal God's word to you. Does that help anybody? Look at 14. He, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're looking at his portfolio, his job, his job description. He will show you things to come. So he will reveal, I mean, the Holy Spirit, when you go to bed, he's with you. He'll reveal to you dreams. He will show you things to come. I could tell you, I could tell you countless things that the Holy Spirit will show me this is going to happen. I mean, the very next day things would happen. The Holy Spirit will show me. The very next day, the Holy Spirit will show me people who may have a spirit of witchcraft on them. The Holy Spirit revealed things. So he will show you things to come. How many of you know that's a good thing? Because that means you're not alone. 
That means we're not in a blind spot. That means things don't have to catch us off guard. He will show. I, I could tell, like I said, I could tell you countless things that the Holy Spirit revealed. I remember one time that the Holy Spirit revealed to me in prayer, I, actually in a dream, the Holy Spirit showed me a young lady. And when he showed me the young lady in the dream, the young lady said, she said something to me in the dream. And I said, look at me. Do you see any marks on me? I mean, just as clear, I could get into more details. I said, do you see any marks on me? And she says, no. And the very next day, something had happened. And the Lord showed me, this is what I showed you the night before, that it will come, but it will not mark you. I just sum up the story. So he said, it will come, but it will not mark you. And that's what's pe why people go to psychics. People go to psychics. Why do they go to psychics? Oh, um. Y'all can pull down the mask while you're trying to talk. Why do they go to psychics? They want to know their future. How many of you know they could go to the Bible and receive the Holy Spirit? Because that's what he said. They want to know things to come. That's why people go palm readers. That's why it's not just to talk to the dead. It's not just, uh, I don't know why I said that. It's not just so they can see crystal. But they want to know, what do I do? What will my future look like? What will my children look like? Where will my children be? Well, a lot of them want to be, how could I get some money? That's why a lot of people go, how could I get rich? How many of you know the Holy Spirit will give you ideas and he will give you the power to get well? You ain't got to go to no psychic. Somebody clap your hand and that's all right, JB. Somebody say, I do not need a psychic. There's somebody in here going to a psychic or somebody watching. Are you going to psychic? You're being to psychic. You got a friend that's a psychic. You got to watch out for people who try to tell you they will. Let me read your palm. Let me see if the one vein reach to the other vein and let me see how they connect. If you want to read anything, read the Bible. Say amen. You don't want open door to psychic reading. You don't want open door to crystal ball re reading. Because when you do that, you're opening doors to sickness and disease for your own health. So when you open those doors, you're inviting in all kinds of spirits. So don't go for nobody to raise no dead and tell you, but they want to talk to your dead grandma or dead grandpa. Leave the dead dead. Say amen. It's real, y'all. And let me tell you what happens today. How many of you know they got mediums on TV? They got all kind of witches on TV and they all dress up with makeup and they look so normal. And people are like, tell me what my dead aunt said. And it looked, listen, that's witchcraft. And God hates witchcraft. Somebody say amen. So don't open the dead to nobody. Tell you that you can talk to the dead. That's demonic powers and demons that are talking. Good stuff. So you're helping me, Bishop. Look at verse 14. He shall glorify me. So whoever's doing that, you're going to bring sickness on you if you do that. If not you, it's going to attack your children. So if you're doing it, you need to repent of it, close the door, but do not open doors to witchcraft. He shall, God, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and I shall show it, show it unto you. All things that the Father had are, are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, I'm in verse 16, and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. Are you with me? Are you still with me? So let's go in our Bibles now to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2. One of the things Jesus told his disciples, he said, when I leave, I want you to tarry. I want you to wait in Jerusalem. Really. And he said, before you do any ministry, he said, tarry, pray. He said, my, wait on my spirit. So you don't want to do nothing on this earth without God's Holy Spirit. So I say amen. That's why the devil tries to do everything he could to get us to sin against the Holy Spirit, to get us to defile our bodies, because he know the more we put the wrong stuff in, the more we do things to defile the body, the less the Holy Spirit power could be in operation. Amen? You can grieve him. What do you mean grieve him? You can stop him from operating. You can stop him from speaking. You can stop him from revealing himself based on what you do to your body. Based on, based on how you treat your body. You can drown the Holy Spirit voice out. And how many of you know we need him in this hour? Because the only way we could fight in this world is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, I need you. If that's you, say amen. amen. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I need you. If that's you, clap your hand and give God a praise. Are you with me? 
So Acts chapter 2. I need him every hour, every second, every minute. Let's start from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house. So, let me say this, and again you can ask questions. And anybody that may want to add after the service, you can go right ahead. The Holy Spirit comes with demonstration. One of the reasons why he needs to demonstrate Mishiri is because there are people who believe that the Holy Spirit is not real. Amen? So when you say he comes with demonstration, he comes in a way where he will reveal things about persons where there's no way you could know it. It had to come from the Spirit of God. So it makes people more curious. Say, give, us, say, give me an example. You remember the woman at the well? Anybody remember that? What made that woman more curious? Good. What did he know? He knew she had five husbands and the one at home was not her, hers. So the Holy Spirit reveals those type of things. That's what makes preaching and witnessing powerful. You could be witnessing to someone and the Holy Spirit will tell you they lost a mother. Or he may not even tell you personally they lost a mother. He might say they had a death. And then in your witnessing, you can say, did you just recently experience a death? Be like, how did you know? That makes them interested. How did you know that I just experienced a death? So the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal things to you about someone that you're witnessing to. And it opens, it's not so you could go into psychic power. It's not so you could show how powerful you are. The only reason the Holy Spirit is revealing that is because he's trying to draw that person to him. So that's not a time for you to show how spiritual and how wonderful you are. That's a time for you to say the Holy Spirit is trying to draw this person and he's just using that gift to bring that person in. Because some people need something supernatural to draw them. Only Ms. Sher only Ms. Am I, are you, you hear, Ms. Carolyn hear that? Sometimes the Holy Spirit people need something supernatural to draw them. So you have to tap into the Holy Spirit to, to, for, for people to want to be drawn. Let me prove that. Look at Acts. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were all sitting. And they appeared unto them clothed in tongues. They begin to pray in tongues. Like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with who? So when you see Holy Ghost, who's that? That's Holy Spirit. Now let me say this to you. A lot of people believe that when they get filled with the Holy Spirit, they got to start rolling their eye. They got to start rolling on the floor. How many of you know, don't take all that? Uh, only three of y'all. If you roll in your eye, you can scare me. If I see you a foam coming out of your mouth, you can really scare me. So if you got to be foaming, I could be like, you know what? You go home and finish this prayer. <laughs> you don't have to do all of that. Amen? So that's a one, one of the reasons, too, if I'm talking, that's why people don't like to receive, because they think they got to do all this, and they can, that the Holy Spirit can just take them over, and they can be like, ah! Some people, they may do that because that's a part of their personality. They just... I don't even know some people are extra with the spirit or without the spirit. Okay, three of y'all. Let me try that. Again, you could ask questions. How many know some people just have an extra personality? So, because they have an extra personality, that carries over into the spirit. And, you know what I mean? So when they receive the spirit, how many of you know, it isn't that the Holy Spirit ain't working, they just what? Because Why? Because that's, with, that's a part of their personality. Does that make sense? So you can't, somebody, that may be just who they are. <laughs> Clap your hand if you understand that. Clap your hand if you understand that. Okay, y'all ain't sound like y'all sure, but I'll take it. <laughs> and they appeared unto them in verse 3, cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. So, what are we seeing here, Jerome, is the initial evidence of the Holy Spirit. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit, I should say. What are we seeing? The whole church goes quiet. 
One more time. Let me, let me go slowly. What are we seeing here in the book of Acts is the initial evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, Joey. Speaking in other tongues. That's the initial evidence. Are there other gifts of the Spirit? Okay, name one. Prophecy, name another one. Interpretation of tongues, name another one. Word of wisdom, name another one. Word of knowledge, discernment. Miss Carolyn say discernness, discernment. Speaking in tongues, they are gifts, right? But what do we see now is the initial evidence. Do we see the initial evidence as being prophecy? What do we see the initial evidence as? So, because we see this as the initial evidence of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues must be important, correct? Correct? Why? Because based on scripture, what is the initial evidence? Okay, y'all ain't sound sharp, but let's go. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Correct? And they all were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were, what, confounded. What were they? Listen, why were they confounded? Because they heard them speaking in their language, and they know that these men did not know it. What was taking place? Talk to me, y'all could talk. What, they were being drawn. What was taking place is they saw the power of the Holy Spirit. So remember when I said, we're living in a time where people need to see demonstration. And the way that they see demonstration is not by us, but by the power of the Holy Spirit through us. An example of witnessing to someone and telling something that they, they did not know. I remember one time a young lady came up to the altar and I told her sister's name and she could not believe it. I never met her before, never saw her before, and I was able to tell you of a sister, and I was able to tell her exactly what the sister's name was. She was completely blown the water. She went to somebody and said, do you know he just told me? That made her, anytime she sees me, anytime she's going through something, she calls Dr. Edmund. She don't even come to church. She never forget that experience. She saw the reality and the power of God and the, how God became so living. So when we allow the Holy Spirit to work through us, y'all, and another thing the Holy Spirit may do is he may allow you to get up through the night and say, call, call Susie, call Frank. Right now, they're going through something. And the minute you call them, they'll be like, what made you call me? No, I was just about to take my life. I was looking at some pills and I was about to take my life. So the Holy Spirit will, that's what he does. That's a part of his nudging. That's a part of your leading. He will, he will show you to call someone or intercede for someone. Get up and pray right now for so-and-so. And he'll be like, why am I praying? Or he may not even say so-and-so. He may just prompt you to pray. And then somebody may call you the next day and say, man, I, almost, I got in a car accident last night. And you say, what time? It was exactly 3 o'clock. Do you know God woke me up at 3 o'clock and I was praying the same time? And then the Holy Spirit will show you, this is why I had you praying. So he will, that's the way, I love this. I, I can talk about this all night. I, I'm enjoying this. That's the way he makes himself alive. He will give you experiences to show you that's me. And then when somebody come and tell you, it ain't real, speaking in tongues ain't real, you're all faking. You'll be like, uh, I, it ain't no fake. Because those things that happen, you will know it's not coincidence. And the more, he will reveal that to you more and more. Little things to say, see me? See, I had you to call See, I, I had you to go to that person and say that. So he will reveal himself more and more and more. And the more he reveals himself, it's the more you will want to seek him and the more you want to know him. And the more that relationship grows, the more it grows. Because he'll begin to reveal himself so much. And that's what he desires to do. He begins to reveal himself. And as he reveals himself to you, far as who he is, then he, he'll begin to reveal Christ to you. Does that make sense? He'll make you want to begin to, to seek the things of God, to seek the word out. And he'll make God's word come alive. You'll read the word and be like, man, that wasn't just a, a, something that I read. It's like almost like the pages leap, the, page, the, the words leaped off the page. He makes the word of God living. And that's the difference between a written letter and a living letter. Somebody that just reads the word, they just reading the word, be like, man, I can't get enough. But when the spirit of God makes it alive, be like, man. I see that. Look at I never saw that before. The Holy Spirit begins to make the word illuminated, becomes alive. It's like a light is shined on it. Does that make sense to anybody? So let's go. 
And it was noise abroad, the multitude came together, and they were confounded because every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galatians? How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we, we were born? Passions, Medians, Ele Elamites, and dwellers in Mesop Mesopotamia. Am I saying that right? And Judea, and Caper in, in Cap Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia, in Parta, in Partamacia, <laughs> hallelujah. Verse 10, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya, about, about Serene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God. So guess what? You know what they heard? They heard them worshiping God in their language. So they were like, what? How could this be possible? So what do you and I need to pray for? on a daily basis is, Lord, help me to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, make yourself real to me. And when you ask him to make himself real, get ready for him to make himself real. Don't back off. Don't get scared. Because he will make himself real. But he's waiting to make himself real. He's waiting for you to ask him to make himself real. He's waiting to reveal Christ to you. So in this day and time, y'all, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to keep us focused. Am I talking right? To bring strength. Because how many of you know sometimes we get weak? But the Holy Spirit brings strength to us. So that's a part of his job. His job is to strengthen us. I guarantee you, anyone in this room, a lot of times I tell you all things, put it to the test. If I was a cook and I told you my curry chicken tastes good, you would never know by just the smell. The way that you know you, it tastes good is you have to taste it. The way that we know that it's real, if I tell you that he would strengthen you, when you leave here, Take about, a, I was going to say an hour. I challenge you, pray in tongues for half an hour and watch the strength that comes. Watch the difference that you felt before you pray. Because you know a lot of times the doctors say, take the medicine and the medicine's supposed to feel good. Well, how will you know you're going to feel good if you don't take the medicine? So now as a doctor, I'm giving you a test. Pray in tongues for half an hour and watch your mindset change. Watch the strength that will come. Watch how you will go from feeling weak to feeling stronger. Watch how a half an hour would be like, man, why do you pray in tongues for half an hour? Watch when you get home. The things that might have pulled you, you won't feel as pulled because the Holy Spirit is strengthening you. The things that you might want to go to, the music that you might want to listen to, the phone calls that you might want to make. The problem with us is we don't fellowship enough with him. The more we fellowship with him, the more he will reveal himself. The more we fellowship with him is the more ideas. And I, 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 when I say ideas, it, to me, it don't even seem like enough. The more wisdom that he will download, the more knowledge he will download, the more you fellowship with him. So you want to pray in tongues, y'all. You want to pray in tongues for direction. God, what direction should I take? Uh, tonight, y'all, as I was getting ready with, to come to service, I began to meditate on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, you got a book. And this is what you got to do. He instructs you. So if you don't, pr if you don't pray and, and you don't fellowship with him, how could he instruct you? Where could he lead you? How could he guide you? How, what could he show you? If you're just keeping it to yourself and just reading the Bible. So the Holy Spirit wants to be active in your life. If you've got a friendship, aren't you, aren't you, don't you fellowship with your friends? Don't you talk to your friends? But the same with the Holy Spirit. He wants to be active. What he wants to be? Well, he wants to be active inside of your life. You'll be surprised how what he will reveal. You'll be surprised what he will say. You'll be surprised what he will show you if you, be, if you allow him to be more active. Come on, clap your hand and give God a praise, somebody. Come on, clap your hand like you're glad to be here. Listen, look at verse 12. And they were all amazed, and, were, and the Bible says, and were in doubt. They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying, one to another, what meaneth this? Others mock and said, others what? How many of you know when people don't understand something, they can mock it? Do you believe people mock speaking in tongues today? Yeah. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. I had recently, and this is truth, I had a, a, a young lady who's a relative of mine, who's a relative of mine. She said, I went to one of them speaking in tongues just right in my presence. And this was, in, this was in years ago. This was recently. I went to one of those speaking in tongues church and I heard, I don't know this, ah, and I never went back. I never, you know when she said that? She said that at 
she said that at a place where she was going through something. And I thought to myself, to keep no joke, I thought to myself, I said, no wonder. I really thought this, and I even thought today, I may have, I may have to call her, because this is a relative. Because the Holy Spirit is power. What is he? I really, I don't just want you to say yes to that, but I want you to hear me. And if you need power in your life, in any circumstance, whether it's death, whether it's a husband that you want saved, a child that may be going astray, if you need power and you're mocking the power, then that means you have nothing to fight against what is fighting your family. I really want you to hear that. I really, don't, Lord, I put God open every ear. Because I saw something attacking her family. I really did. I saw some attacking her family. It was one situation after the other situation, after the other situation, after the other. And I don't want to say because they may be watching what the situation was. I just want you to hear. I saw one thing attacking and one thing attacking and one thing. And then I th thought to myself, no wonder the enemy has legal right to take. Because she's not exercising the power of the Holy Spirit to stop. Does that make sense? Don't just, again, it's Bible study and you can ask questions. I'll give you an example. I had this lady that would come to my service that was a certified witch. I didn't know she was a witch. I really didn't know. When I say certified witch, y'all, people in the city would go to her and cast spells. One night, I went to bed, true story, and I saw the lady casting spells. I saw her. No one told me. And I saw her cast a spell. But in the middle of us, she could not see it. I saw the angel wave its wing in the dream. And when the angel waved his wing, the lady would step back in the dream. And then she would do it again. And the angel would wave his wing, Joey, and she would step back. I could see what behind was behind her, but she couldn't. The Lord revealed to me in that dream, she's working witchcraft. Then I found out afterwards that this lady was, people would go to her to work spells. So what God showed me was, it was the power of the Holy Spirit that revealed it. Now, if I was somebody that didn't, have the Holy Spirit or didn't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, how many of you know those contations might have worked? If you understand what I'm saying, clap your hand and give God a praise. Yes. Again, you don't have to clap just because I say it. You could ask questions. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit does. It helps you to fight things that are unseen because sometimes Satan trespasses. But if you don't know your spiritual authority, he will continue to trespass. And when he trespasses, he don't just trespass on you. He trespasses on your daddy. He trespasses on your children. He trespasses on your father. He trespasses on your sister. But if you have spiritual authority, you can tell the devil, look here, enough trespassing right here. I take authority over you in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to take your hands off of my sister. I command you to take your hands off of my brother. I command you to take your hands off of my mother. Every time I lay at that altar, I pray. I say, God, keep my mother's mind. Keep my mother's mind. Do you know every time I spoke, speak to my mother, even though they tell me she's loose, she always remembers my voice. I ask Joey, I say, do you does mom remember your voice? And I believe God that every time I call her, I call her recently, she say, I hear from you in a while. I say, I, I say, her memory ain't that bad. But I'm praying. You see, I'm praying. God, keep her mind. The power of authority. But if I didn't have that power and the, to speak to dementia, to speak to what? Oh, somebody got to hear it. I pray you all hear me. If I didn't have the power to speak to dementia, that enemy would overtake her. It doesn't mean the enemy still ain't fighting her mind. But how many of you know he's getting some resistance? Clap your hand if you understand what I'm saying tonight. But when you don't have power or when you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, what power do you have to come against death? What power do you have when the enemy comes into your house to take? There's no power because you're mocking, you're mocking him. So when you're mocking him, who are you relying on? Just talk to me. When you mock his power, who are you relying on? You're relying on yourself. And I want you, to, I want you all to hear this. I've seen the enemy, that relative I'm talking about, I've seen the enemy wreak havoc in her family. 
I've, I'm going to say it again. I've seen the enemy wreak havoc in a family. And but when I heard him mock, the whole, even, and let me say this to you. I don't know who I'm talking to. Even if you don't even understand him, you should not mock him. Thank you, Miss Carolyn. Glad you're here. Even if somebody speaks in tongues and you don't understand it, you don't go, I don't know what that, blah, 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 blah. You better leave it alone. What you don't know, don't touch. Clap your hand if you understand what I'm saying. But when people are bold to say, I don't know what that Ababa is, why they go around here speaking in tongues and start mocking it, how many of you know they just brought judgment on themselves? Let me prove that. For those, don't just say amen. The Bible says all manner of sin will be forgiven except the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. You just went quiet. Those who are at home. The Bible says all manner of sins will be forgiven except the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Now that should be a question. Somebody should say, Bishop, you should be thinking, what is blasphemy? There are a lot of disputes about blasphemy is. But one of the things that they say blasphemy is, blasphemy is when you take what is attributed to God and you attribute it to the devil. The Bible says all manner of sins will be forgiven except blasphemy, watch this, against the Holy Spirit. So when you start speaking and start mocking the Holy Spirit, you endanger, you get, you endanger a blasphemy in the Holy Spirit and not being forgiven. I, and let me do that. And let me, another thing I hear the Lord saying tonight is, you're in danger of bringing curses on yourself. So you, if you, you do not want to mock the Holy Spirit. You don't want to mock speaking in tongues. I used to see Benny Hinn blow on people all the time. Whew. I see people fall on. I, I didn't understand it. I'm even though I never touch it. What you don't understand, again, I want to say to you, do not touch. But don't mock it. Because if you mock it, you can be opening door to curses on you. And if you hear someone mocking it, you don't laugh at it, you don't take it funny, you politely just excuse yourself. And if the Holy Spirit leads you to say something, then you say something. But don't get, don't indulge in the laughter like it's a joke. Because we need power. Somebody say, I need power. How many of you know we live in a world where things are fighting for our minds? Things are battling for our mind, not just battling for our mind, battling for our children. Battling to, so if we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit or being led at the right place at the right time, how many of you know we could miss? We could miss what God is saying. We could miss what God is doing. I don't know about you, but I won't be led by the, if anybody won't be led by the Holy Spirit, clap your hand and give God a praise in this room. I preach Sunday on the will of God. Tonight, I'm preaching on the Holy Spirit. Listen, I want to tell everyone in this room, there's nothing more important to your faith than having the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you in this time. I'm going to say it again. Because you don't have the power to keep yourself. How many of you know if, if we doing the things we do with the Holy Spirit, if you say the stuff you say with him, oh, you nobody saying nothing. If you do the things you do and you do pray in tongues, imagine if there was no Holy Spirit to keep you back, keep some boundaries. How many of you know we'll be doing the mumbo, the jumbo, the bump? We'll be doing electric slide. We'll be doing all kinds of stuff. We'll be off the chain if there was no Holy Spirit. So I say amen. So if we don't allow him, y'all, so if ever a time in, in the 21st century that we need his power, we need his leading, and we need his comfort, and we need his strength, and we need his direction. It's now. You do not want to leave a church that is spirit-filled. To go to some place will tell you that get seen for today. The spirit, and that, there's some of you, well, we don't pray in tongues in here. If somebody, you go to church and tell you, we don't pray in tongues in here, you hold your finger and leave in the air and say, you know, I got to go. Because I need to pray in tongues. You may not need to do it, but I know my mind. I got to keep my mind right. Come on, clap your hands. It's okay to clap. Yes, Lord. And like I said, he comes to comfort, he comes to guide, and he comes to give you strength. He comes to give you power. He comes to bring direction. If I, I, could, only, I could only tell you a little bit. There's so many stories I could give you on how he has directed me, how he showed me what to say, how he showed me what to do, how I would ask him for direction, how he speaks through scriptures. When I talk to y'all, y'all, and y'all hear me say, and the Lord spoke to me, that was not the Lord. That was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's agent on the earth. They operate as one. But when you hear somebody say the Lord, it's the Spirit of God. When you say God spoke, that's the Holy Spirit speaking. It's the Holy Spirit that God uses in the earth. So it's not God. Because if God was to speak, I'm even know we'd be in a lot of trouble. 
We can handle his voice. So he uses the Holy Spirit in the earth. So that nudging you feel is the Holy Spirit. That when I heard, when I say the scriptures showed me and the Holy Spirit showed me what to do in concern of Africa and how to move, that's the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit tells you to read and he makes the word of God alive, that's the Holy Spirit. And he wants to make himself more real. That is, a, it can take the Holy Spirit to win your family. It can take the power of the Holy Spirit to cause you to witness. Listen, I was shy growing up. I was, this boldness didn't come just because I wake up and I was just bold. A lot of times my wife say to me, honey, that's for you. You could do that, I can. That's, it's nothing but relying on the Holy Spirit. You know, some groups I had to speak in was all Caucasian. No joke. Some groups I spoke in didn't even believe in tongues. Take that. I'm not talking about going in a room where, and I'm not talking, and I'm, some groups I had to speak in were doctors, lawyers, and professional people. And I was called to speak. And they were mostly Caucasians. And I had to speak to them and they didn't believe in what I believe. How do you speak in a room of mostly Caucasian? They're, they're doctors, they're professionals, and you speak. I had to say, Holy Spirit. I remember one time I had to speak on a weekend. It was called an Emmaus weekend. It's something that they do in the Methodist church. And all type of professionals were there. They called me to speak. I got sick the entire weekend. The entire, I want you to hear me, no joke, I was sick. The rest of them were eating and fellowshipping, Chris. I was sick. I was laying in bed sick with a fever. When it was time for me to speak, I got up. In the midst of speaking, the fever broke. And the Lord, when I, after I sat down, the Lord said, speak in tongues. Bring a message. Remember now, I'm in a group, Caucasians, doctors, dentists, professionals. Speak in tongues. I went in that meet in the midst, waited for an opportune time, and then I spoke, because it was three speakers. I was one of the speakers. After the last speaker, speaker spoke, the presence of God came, the Lord said, speak in tongues, time to bring a message. I went off in tongues. When I went off in tongues, the whole room went quiet. They never heard nothing like it. I'm not in a room with Caucasian folks. When the room went quiet, someone interpreted what I said. All the men in the room were like, what happened? Just like that, just like we just read. So I'm not telling you a story. When they asked what happened, there was a prayer chapel. Some of the men in that, who was in that service, they took them to the prayer chapel, explained to them about the Holy Spirit, and some of them received the baptism of the Holy Spirit that weekend. That's the power. Oh, y'all could clap better than that. Do it on my experience. That's the power. But that's, that's one. Remember, I take a tell stories. One time I went inside this laundromat, and the Holy Spirit say, sing. In a laundry mat in the community, the Holy Spirit say, sing. I say, sing what? He say, sing. I say, oh. He say, sing louder. I say, oh. The blood of Jesus. He say, sing louder. I say, oh, the blood. Uh, he say, sing louder. I say, oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. And then all of a sudden, this preaching anointing came on me. I say, and God will wash your sins away. After I finished preaching, I packed my clothes. And I'm preaching in the laundry bag. Because, you know, now I'm bold. Now I'm just going off. I was packing my clothes, getting ready to leave. A couple came to me, and they say, sir, me and my wife was in church. We backslid. They say, hearing you preach it, they made us want to go back to church. We're going to go back to church. <laughs> Look at somebody say, true story. Power of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit will give you power. The whole, I hear you, Lord. The Holy Spirit will encourage you. When you're down and you out, the Holy Spirit will give you song. The Holy Spirit will remind you of who you are. But if you allow the, yourself not to fellowship with him, if you allow yourself not to pray in tongues, shut off the phone. Shut off the computer. Turn off the phone. Turn off the TV and take half an hour and watch how the atmosphere will shift. And I'm not talking about turn, praying in tongues like this. I hear somebody, I'm praying. No. Tell somebody no. Yando koto rebe sandarabako shatarabaka satieto. 
Yandi eko to riando robo ko shanda rabaka e tarabosa. Yanda rebo ko shanda rebeko to re dare suma. Yanda rebo randa rebo ko to raba. Yande ha lebo ko rama yati sala o robo. Yinde ha yebo ko to re ndaraba. Yande aki to ros in de ay yundabo re. Yande a ye lolobo ko to reba ha. Yande eko to reba sin de rea yalaboko sha. Yanda isi lebo ande alalabo shanda raboko to. In the hand, the rebos and the reboco city, the anda raboho, renda raba yet and aleshoma rabacoto, renda reboco to raman da rabos and the reboco. And when you, why are you speaking out loud? Because you're speaking out loud so your ears could hear it. As you speak out loud so your ears could hear it, then your faith is being built. Faith coming by to so speak out loud. Rabosando, or so you speak into the atmosphere. Things in the atmosphere that will try to drown out like depression or uh, 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 suicide or uh, uh, loneliness. You're drowning those things and you commanding your spirit to overcome. It's almost like, say prove it. Say prove it. See now you're making me get up. Why y'all making me get up? Let me prove that to you that I wasn't just making that up. When you're down and out or when you're in a love mood, what do you do? You turn on the music. Right or wrong? Oh, look at five of y'all. And depending on what kind of music you put on, what it does? It sets the, who that is? Jimmy, boy, you right on it. It sets the atmosphere. Speaking in tongues does the same thing. You're setting the atmosphere with the presence of the Lord. But most of y'all, when you're going through, you know what you do? What's going to work? Your mind. Your mind rehearsing everything that's wrong, everything that's bad, every bill you got to pay, every payment that's late, everybody that did you wrong, everybody that said something wrong to you today, everybody that told you off and you didn't have a chance to tell them back off, right or wrong? And the more you think about it, how many of you know the matter you get? And the matter you get, the more you don't want to pray, right or wrong? So what you got to do is yande koto rebe sanda rabo koto rabaka. You got to drown out all the negativity by setting the atmosphere. The enemy wants to set the wrong atmosphere so you could be drawn to the wrong thing. That's why prayer is so important. But even when you come to pray, and you, you don't want to pray and say, I showed up the altar for five minutes, or I don't know what to pray. There's a lot of times I don't know what to pray. I mean, I'm really rare. Because <laughs> some of you know there's a whole lot to pray about. <laughs> You even just got to pray about your own issues. You can pray about people have issues. You got a lot to pray about. So when you pray in, as you pray in tongue, the Holy Spirit will just show you, just pray and pray. And then God will begin to reveal more and more things to you. And there's a lot to pray about. Family members. I just had a cousin that died. His family that got to be prayed for. Joey's family is, wants his wife to come. Joey's green cat is Shanda and, 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 and things that I want God to do for her. Church and things that I want God to do for you. Chris, who I don't see, and you I don't know what he's doing in Pennsylvania. Hallelujah. Yeah, Jerome and him being here, Denise and Stacy. It's like I can't, there's so much to pray about. So, Imakato, so, so you got to, if you bear what you bear under your, your load, imagine when I got to bear you and bear me. Take, yeah, ride that. Take that for a walk. So imagine if you bear the things you got to bear. Imagine what I got to bear. Bearing you and bearing me. So how do you bear it, Takiya? The way that I bear it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if not, crazy, I'd be taking a couple drinks. I'd be drinking your drink, my drink, and everybody else's drink. I'd be like, let's all have a drink. Does that make sense? But it's the power of the Holy Spirit that gives you the strength to bear the load. It's about, you, you got that? And that's how we, because some of us are dealing with real pressures. Miss Kelly is dealing with real uh, issues. She's dealing with real, going to, the, to, the, to, to dialysis, that's real. Having the bills to pay, and not, that's real. How do you bear it, Miss Carolyn? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. So some of us wonder how we do it and how some of us don't do it. It's because we have the power of the Holy Spirit. If you don't allow the power of the Holy Spirit to operate, you can hate people. I wish I had somebody right in here. If you don't let the whole power of the Holy Spirit, you can want to take revenge. Right? I wish I had somebody really in here. Because how many of you know this flesh, when someone hits you, what's your first reaction? Right? If somebody hits you, your natural reaction would be like, 
Some of us will even react. That's murder time. Right or wrong. So how do you deal with that in a world you need the Holy Spirit? That's how you overcome. But some of you are not using that power and you wonder why you're getting so defeated. Why you are not breaking the things that you say, Bishop, it's so hard. It's so hard because you're not using your strength. You're trying to break it. You're trying to break stuff you were not designed to break. Because some stuff ain't just us. Some stuff is supernatural. What do I mean Supernatural. In the spirit realm, like it's and not just in the spirit realm, generational. You know, mommy and daddy didn't tell us everything they dealt with. If daddy was a rolling stone, mama might have been making some moonshine. Am I right? So guess who got to deal with all that stuff? Us. Because they didn't tell us all the stuff. So we now we're a generation, we have the power of the Holy Spirit who strengthened us to help us overcome those things. But we got a fellowship with him. We got, and he gave us power. That's why Jesus said, wait, y'all. I know what y'all going to be up against, so wait for the Holy Spirit. So he's God is saying, guess what? I know y'all in 2020. I know the music's are changing. I know the movies are changing. I know you can't go nowhere and not see sex. So I know what y'all need. You need my power to overcome it. If you don't exercise my power, you can't overcome it. I know you're tempted. I know you're drawn. I know you're getting pulled, but I'm giving you power on how to overcome it. So it isn't like he's saying, I just can throw you all to the wolves and you all fend for yourself. He said, I'm, you can be wolves, but I gave you strength with the wolves. So you could have power among the wolves. So tonight, when you leave here, I challenge you. Take a half an hour by yourself, pray in tongues. Watch the strength that will come. And not just strength, watch him download scriptures. Watch him download things. Watch him reveal. And the only way you know I'm telling you the truth is prove it. But you can't pray in tongues and watch TV. You can't pray in tongues and watch Nightline. You can't pray in tongues and have the radio on and jamming at the same time. Pray in tongues silently, without the radio, just your ears and your voice. And if you want to cut the radio on, let it be soft and let it be worship. Amen? And then watch how the atmosphere will begin to change and watch how your strength will come put it to the test one of the things that 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 i told my wife last night she said you have a little you feel like you feel a, a little she said, let me give you a little pill <laughs> and when i took the pill i felt better i'm giving you a pill i'm telling you what to do to feel spiritually better clap your hand i thank you sir thank you for coming I'm giving you the pill to tell you what to do to resist. I, I can't even begin to tell you how many times I was literally, right up there sitting down, y'all. Truth. Cut the cameras off, y'all. Can't, I can't let the world hear this. Now we know that JGN TV has been a blessing to you in more ways than one. And we also know that what you make happen for someone else, God will make happen for you. So here's your opportunity to support. Visit JGNTV.org, click the donate button and become a partner. Thank you for tuning in and have a great day. Faith without works is dead.
You can't believe God for a job and just believe that they're going to call. Get up, dress up, put on your suit, put on your tie, go out and look for a job. When you move, God will move just like that. Remember the scripture says, show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith with my works. Anytime God speaks a word, there must be a response to that word. When you respond, you're giving God something to work with. So today I want to give you an opportunity to look at faith different. Add some works with your faith and watch things begin to happen. Don't just stay home dreaming. Put some action behind it. Go out and make your dreams happen and God will set up the divine appointments. He will open doors that only He can. We serve a God that can open doors. We serve a God that can close doors. We serve a God of impossibilities and He's waiting to make your dreams possible. They move by faith and put some actions with it. You see him ask him. So that means He's good just with the gift. Imagine when He brings the power. So if that's him, imagine you with the power. So if you feel weak, use the power. That's why I tell Pastor Coco off, I say, do you don't want misservice? You won't be under the word because it's the word that brings power. It's the Holy Spirit that makes that word alive. So when you don't feel like running, he gives you power to run. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They will run with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. That's the power of the Holy Ghost being described. So it's like our power. And the day that the power came in the room, they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance and all men were confounded. Do you know in that day that 5,000 plus people were added to the church? 5,000 plus people was invited to the church by that power. We sit on so much power tonight, y'all. We just don't even know how much power we have. We're sitting in this room tonight. That's why the devil hates for us to come together. Because he knows wherever two or three are gathered with power, all kind of things could happen. Because one could chase a thousand, two could chase ten thousand, three could chase a hundred thousand. We got power. We just got to unite that power. And we got to believe that we got power. And stop letting the enemy just come and wreak havoc. Stop letting the enemy wreak havoc. One night I was preaching in this service. I was talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. My son's eyes begin to swell in the middle of the service. Chai, in the middle of the service, while I'm preaching on spiritual warfare, true story, a couple months ago, my son's eye began to swell in the middle. Fong grabbed him, took him in the corner, began to say, we plead the blood, and did spiritual warfare as power, and his eyes went right down in the middle of the service. Right in the middle of the service, the devil attacked him, but right in the middle of the service, we use power. See that? Y'all could clap later. That's power over suicide that will try to come. That's power over untimely death. That's power over when the devil tries to come in your house and wreak havoc. You say, devil, I got power. You have no legal right in this house, but you got to exercise the power. The Bible says that day the Spirit of God came into the house and they were all in one accord and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. You got the power of the Holy Spirit living in you exercise it and if you don't pray in tongues you ask God to fill you with say God fill me with your Holy Spirit fill me God give me the ability to pray in tongues God and if you don't do it tonight in the morning God fill me with your Holy Spirit come to this altar God fill me and start practicing it sometimes when I drive him I drive in this car I drive to Miami I love to drive to Miami by myself and I love to drive back when I jump in that car to Miami by myself or back that's tongues that's me and tongues ride I pray in tongues the whole way there and the whole way back. And I watch God give me ideas. I watch him download. Do this, do that. You forgot to do this. Put this to work. Okay, this is what you need to say to this person. Give this person a call. Me and him have the best fellowship. Just praying in tongues. So you got to practice doing it. Clap your hand if you understand what I'm saying tonight. <laughs> Clap your hand. My stomach all right now. Stand on your feet. Come on, Shadrach. Listen, I, any demons I have defeated, I ain't defeated my power. Any witchcraft that did not work, I ain't defeated my power. Me still being in the faith, it ain't in my power. It's because of the Spirit of God. If you believe that, clap your hand and give God a praise. Anyone tonight. That is doubting anything that I say, anyone in here that walked in here weak, all I ask you for is half an hour on your way home. All I ask you is half an hour before you go to bed. And those of you that never prayed in tongues, you need to find someone and say, mom, pray with me. 
to get someone before you leave here tonight, whether Pastor Elliot, whether Pastor Coco, whether Odise, whether Plumber, whether Odise, whether, whether uh, JB Teacher, get a leader, get Rosie, get somebody, say, pray with me. Say, pray with me that I will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I'm telling you, you will grow, and I'm telling you it's real. I, I wish I could make you believe it's real, but I can't. I only could tell you my experience. He's real. I will never stop speaking in tongues. Clap your hand and give God. I'll never, 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 never. It's so embedded in me, and I've been saved for so long, even when I don't want to speak in tongues, it come out of me. Yande. <laughs> It just flows because I'm 14. Remember that 14 to now, all these years speaking in town. I don't even know. It just flows. It just flows. It's like a part of who I I could praise singing in tongues. I could worship speaking in tongues. I, it's just a part of who I am. And no one could take it from me because I know what God has revealed to me. So without if somebody mock, mock it, or that's them. And I'm telling you, you know I could tell you if you mock it, you bring curses on you because I've seen the curses on other people. So that wasn't me just saying that. I've seen other people curse because of it. Cut the cameras off. Now we know that JGN TV has been a blessing to you in more ways than one. And we also know that what you make happen for someone else, God will make happen for you. So here's your opportunity to support. Visit JGNTV.org Click the donate button and become a partner. Thank you for tuning in and have a great day. you're joining them to idols that is why satan wants you to have sex outside of the will of god y'all all that is is so that you can grieve the holy spirit so you could stop his power if he could if he could stop his power operating then he could stop he could get you satan don't want you to have power over him so he could bring whatever he wants and then you go that's why it's like no holds barred we're living in a world y'all where anything goes only only Amanda. It's the truth. That's where the world's headed. You know what, too? Let me say this. Do you know the world was always like that from the beginning? For the Garden of Eden, the world was always, you know, be your own God, don't listen to God. That's what was the sin of the Garden. That's what Satan told Adam and Eve. The day you eat the fruit, God, say God knows you will become like him. The whole thing was for you to be a God. Don't obey God. You be your own God. It's the same trick today. Do what you want to do. Whatever feels good, do it. Whatever you want to be, be it. That's not God. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we repent for grieving your Holy Spirit. If you repent with me tonight, take a step forward. Because we have grieved him, not obeyed him, not listened to him, do our own thing. We have grieved him. Father, forgive us when we have joined ourselves to things we shouldn't have joined ourselves to. Forgive us when we put things in our bodies we shouldn't have. Looked at things. Let me say this too. I hear the Lord saying pornography is another way you grieve him. Because they're the gates. 
So Satan will try to get your eye gate, your ear gate. I hear somebody, oral sex is another sin. Oral sex is wrong. I hear some of y'all, I haven't sex. You still haven't sex. Stop trying to sugarcoat it. Those things grieve him. Y'all want some more? Okay, we're gonna, masturbation is wrong. I ain't condemning you. That ain't what it is. That's the wrong spirit. That's not. It's just that I'm trying to show you those are the things that grieve him. Satan wants entryways. So he wants you to end up entangled in perversion. The reason why he wants, Bishop, why does Satan want me in perversion? Because he wants you to not be powerful. He wants you to be powerless. The po more powerless you is, the more he could come and take over. He could take your house. That's what he wants. Satan wants control of our house. We pay the light bill. We pay the water bill and he have control. You have the wreck. Close your eyes tight. Just hear me. If you, if you don't believe me, just like try to hear me. That's what he wants. He don't want you to be of control. He don't want you to, he wants you to think you in control. But he pulled the shots. That's how he rolled your. Then he comes and wreak havoc and then laugh at you. That's why you got to fight. And then say, Holy Spirit, I need help. And he wants, all you got to do is call on him, you know. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, keep your eye closed. Only those who mean it, take a step. Listen, I mind it. I promise you, if you don't step, I ain't mad. It ain't that deep. I got to fight for Duran. Duran, if you got to fight for yourself, call, take a step for you. You ain't mad if they don't step. I know my fight's beyond this place. I got to fight for my children. I got to fight for Chai. I got to fight for Naya. I got to fight for my wife. I got family members I won't save. I want my dreams come to pass. I ain't getting younger. I get older. Look, it's too... How many of you know as you get older, you got to fight? You got to give in? Are you kidding me? Somebody say, Holy Spirit, help. Mm, Y'all ain't hear that. Say it again. Say, Holy Spirit, help. If you mean that, take a step. He waiting on you to ask. Glory to God is correct. Holy Spirit, breathe strength in this room. God, we renounce everything we've done that grieved you. Holy Spirit, that made you pull back. Somebody say, I repent. Say everything I've done, lust, perversion, sexual immorality, lies. Say, I repent now. Unforgiveness. Yeah, pride. Yeah, I call the big ones. You want some more big ones? Pride, jealousy. They all know the things that grieve him. Unforgiveness, hidden sins. You ain't commit adultery, but you lied. You're jealous. you envious. You're prideful. You're bitter. Somebody say, Lord, I repent. Say it and mean it, y'all. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent. Say, Holy Spirit, I repent for where I've grieved you. I knew better. And I still did it. But tonight, I need power. If that's you, take a step. Listen, you may not need power now, but trust me, you're going to need it. You don't know how much you need power until you face with something that power is needed. You know, the day I went to a car wash, and the people who was at eyes closed, the people were at the car wash, right? And I pull up to get my car washed. And I was going to tip them good. Guess what? The power, the water was off. They say, we can't wash your car because we ain't got no water. They missed all the blessings because they had no power. The power was off. You don't want your power to be off and think it's easy because you don't know who may pull up. God may be ready to bless you, but the power is off. Ooh, wow. God may be ready to take you to the next level, but the power is off. Tonight,
don't let the power be off. And if the power is off, you repent and say, God, I need your power. I can't walk around here powerless. What if you were to get a call that your mother is dead or your father is dying and your family needs you but you ain't got no power? Oh my God. What if you get a call that someone got a gun to their head? Someone that you love got a gun to their head but you ain't got no power? What if you get a call that your child, your child, your child right now stop breathing but you ain't got no power? What you gonna do? What could you gonna do if America was to go to war right now, right now, right now, but there's no power? What you gonna do? Jump through windows? What you gonna do? COVID-19 week and there's no power? Panic like the world? Something's gonna happen, y'all. Whether it happens now or later, you're gonna need the power I'm talking about. Whether it happens now or you think this is just another message, but something's gonna happen in this life. Cut the cameras on, make sure they're on. You're gonna need power. I had a lot of things happen in my life. A lot. Shanda called me recently, just to keep eyes closed. She called me in the morning recently and she said, Mom, is, they calling you, do you not answer on the phone? I had to wake up three o'clock to five o'clock in the morning. She said, Mom, something happened to Mom and they rushing her to the hospital. My mother. She called me, Shanda crying. I called home. When I called Shanda, call, I was in prayer. And while I was in prayer, I was walking the floor. I, this is a true story. This ain't made up. If you think it's made up, it's on you. I say, put my mother on the phone. And I walked this floor. In fact, I was even in this room. That's when we had the flood. I was in the next church. That's when we had the flood. I didn't deal with the flood building. I had to go next door. I was walking the floor. When I call, I walk. I say, mom, just listen to me. I do the praying. You just do the crying. Just, just hear my voice. I said, you worship with me. And she, she said, I'm in so much pain. And I begin to take authority, power of the Holy Ghost. What you going to do when somebody calls you and needs your power? I had to have the power for her. Ooh, that, ooh, that takes me somewhere, jump. That takes me somewhere. That almost makes me feel like breaking and falling on my knees. If I didn't have the power for her, what I can do? When my mother needed it, she needed me. And I had to have the power of the Holy Ghost for her. Ain't nothing like hearing your mother grieve in pain. It wasn't no time for me to feel sorry and feel bad with her. It was time for me to call on the power of the Holy Ghost. She didn't need my sympathy. She needed power. She didn't need me crying with her. She needed power. She needed healing power. Woo! God, I cover this room under the blood. Church, we're powerful, man. Jump, we are powerful. We are, yes, we are. We are. There's no greater power, Lord. To I want you to hear this tonight, Lord. There's no greater power under heaven than your power, Lord Jesus. For, Lord, you are the king of all kings. And, God, we do what we do. It's not you, it's us. But tonight, God, we submit to the power of your spirit. Yes, I say it. Don't let us die before our time and don't let no one, none of us in this room die before our time. Don't let us roll over and die. Let us, Holy Spirit, come alive in us. If that's you, raise your hands high. Raise it to heaven. Resist the enemy here. The Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God and resist the devil and he will flee. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. I cover you under the blood tonight. You got real power, jump. We got real power, jump. This ain't made up. This ain't just me talking on a Tuesday night. We got real power in this room. When we use our real power, we can see some real results. When we use our real power, we can see some real results. When we use real power. When we stop playing party cake with this devil who trying to kill us. And we use the power of the Holy Spirit to crush his neck. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Satan doesn't just want you, he wants your family. Please hear that. Satan doesn't just want you, he wants you and your family. Lord, help my ears to hear that. 
Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Not just me wants my church. He wants my future. He wants my children's future. That's enough to make you fight. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hands raised, eyes closed. Keep them close tight. Don't look around. I'm talking to you from the keyboard to the sound room. Let's use our power. Let's use our power. Lord, I know there's so much more we need to know about the Holy Spirit. Give me the power to teach it, to reveal to your people who you are, Holy Spirit, and what you can do. Reveal your power in me and through me more and more. As I live on this earth, let me know you more, Holy Spirit. Somebody say in Jesus' name. If you mean that for you too, take a step. You want to know him more, the Holy Spirit more. Let his power be revealed. If you mean it, keep your eye closed. If you mean it, don't step just because I say it. If you mean it, say, Holy Spirit, not that I need to know you. I have to know you. Not that I want to know you. I must know you. My mind? Me? I need power. I cover you under the blood of Jesus tonight. I break discouragement. Those who are watching, you're not powerless. You got the power over sickness. You got power over disease. You got power over witchcraft and word curses and sorcery. You got power over COVID-19. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I got power. Say it again. Say, I got power. Say it again. Say, I got power. Say, I got Holy Ghost power. Say, I got Holy Spirit power living in me. If you mean that, clap your hand, give God a praise. Let's get ready to give our best to the Lord. Oh, that was good tonight. That was yummy. That was yummy. That was yummy to my tummy. That was yummy. Everybody get your best envelope in your hand. That was yummy. Get your best envelope in your hand. Get your best seed. Those of you at home, you can sow a seed. Get your best envelope in your hand. Father, we thank you tonight in Jesus' name. No one in this room will die before their time. No one in this room will die untimely. I cover it under the blood. I speak it in the atmosphere. I declare and I decree that this will be a debt-free church. I declare and I decree, God, we will see our visions and our dreams come to pass. Others mocking. Don't be those who mock you. Be those who partake. I said some stuff tonight. Yes, sir. Uh, One of the most important messages I preach is tonight, the Holy Spirit. In this day and time, this is one of the most important messages I will ever preach. Thank you, Pastor Elliot. I want somebody to write on their envelopes tonight. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I got it, Pastor Elliot. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Write that on your envelopes. And after you write it, wave it in the air. If somebody next to you don't have a pen, get a pen from them. Say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me. Take your time and write it. We ain't in no rush. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Those of you that I said, put me to the test, take a half an hour, try it. Just try it and see what will happen. Prove me wrong. And if it don't come back to me, come to me and say, Bishop, I did it, ain't nothing happened. Prove me wrong. But remember, you can't have the radio on, you can't have the TV on, you can't be texting while you're doing it. Just that half an hour quiet time. Put me to the test. Somebody wants to say something? Um... Chad doesn't know this. Come on, Pastor. This Elliot. is why Sunday was the way it was. Because I went to Tampa to visit some family. And all the way from Tampa back here, I prayed in tongues. Woo! The entire way. Wow. I prayed in tongues the entire way. Mm. But even even, the, even with just to confirm what Bishop was saying tonight, when you 
are under a ministry, wow. a prophetic ministry that, that the Holy Spirit is in control of, you flow in that. Like the prophetic mantle is on Bishop's life. I give God the glory. And even if it's not on yours per se, that's not the office, you'll flow into it. In September, I just I was laying in my bed and I text Quinn. And the Lord told me that she was supposed to take up the mantle of the food that her mother had. Oh, wow. That she was supposed to pick up where she left off. Quinn said the second I text, I text her that, she had just been thinking about the food ministry. Wow. Wow, that was God. That was God. That was the Holy Spirit. So that everything was... you're saying tonight is, is I'm, I'm proof of that. Yes. I'm, I'm proof of Go ahead, you're doing when, good. You, when you speak to the Holy Spirit, you begin to pray in tongues. Yes. Whatever's coming on you, because you, you know I deal with some serious health issues. I don't deal with yes. light stuff. I deal with you mess around and be dead the next minute. And one night, one of those episodes was coming on me. I said, no, not tonight. And I began to pray in tongues. I said, no, uh-uh, not tonight. And I yes. began to pray in tongues. And the thing went. Yes, it's a spirit. Yes, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. And worship. Also worship. Also worship, y'all. Also worship. Let's stand on our feet. So good. How many of you got something out of tonight? How many of you tonight help you? Good, good, oh, good, 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 good. Very good. Good. Let's bring the basket up. keeps your mind it keeps your mind let's bring the baskets up y'all can God will God yes he will hallelujah God is good point your hands up here father we thank you for the seed somebody say we're blessed say we're, who put this in who put this in tonight who put this in? Amen. Can God, y'all? Can God? Yes, he can. Father, we thank you. Silver and gold have I number, such as I have. Amen. Give I unto thee. Can God? This is so pretty. Who would like to get blessed tonight with this? It's brand new. The stick is still on it. Medium. Ladies, medium. The sticker nobody wore it before. Ladies, medium. Who would like to get blessed with this? Come on up here. Who would like to get blessed with a ladies medium? Oh, who would like to get blessed with a ladies medium tonight? You give it to your daughter? Come on, come get it. The sticker's still on it. Just for you. Give it to your daughter. Can God, y'all? Got to be where God wants you to be to get what God wants you to receive. Father, bless this right now. Somebody make sure to take this off my, my, my offering. Take this off of my card. Father, we give not to get. But we expect. Pastor, said, you sprayed the perfume? Spray that. Spray that. A lot of good things are happening in the atmosphere, y'all. A lot of good things. Somebody say, God is doing it. Doing it. I ain't telling y'all, like, a lot of good things are happening. Not maybe, not kind of, a lot. I just can't reveal it yet. It ain't time yet, but a lot of good things are happening. How many of you remember Yante that came? The young man Yante that came. Yante that came. Yante, the, he plays for the USA team. He scored seven points and two rebounds in his first game. And his second game, he scored 21 points, nine rebounds. And he was, and maybe two or three blocks, he was player of the game. He was player of the game. Oh, come on, y'all. Clap your hands. Yante. Point, punch your hands. Punch your hands. Say, go, Yante. Uh -uh, let him see. Move that camera. Say, go, Yante. He watches, y'all. Move that camera. Let him see them. Y'all point, like y'all point at him. Point at him. Say, go, Yante. Say, 40 points. Can God do that, y'all? He watches. You never know. Look, punch your hands back. Say, Yante. We believe. Say power. power. 
Say you need. I don't, you all say it with some authority, man. Say it with some power. Say you need the power of the Holy Ghost on that court. Say play with the Holy Ghost. Say play with the Holy Ghost. And you'll get that 40 points. Say in Jesus' name. Say Yante, come alive. Say Yante, come alive. In Jesus' name. He scored 21 points in nine blocks. How many of you know he can get that 40 points? Can God do that, Miss Carolyn? Amen. Yes, he can. So, Father, we thank you. This seed is blessed. We believe, we believe, we believe. Somebody say, Lord, I believe. believe. Father, we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. This offering, y'all, is a power offering. This offering is what we give unto the Lord with the power of the Holy Spirit. We need breakthrough in our finances. How many of you need breakthrough in your finances? Well, how many of you know the power of the Holy Ghost could give break the break break your finances wide open? The power of the Holy Ghost could open open windows of heaven all from all over you. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. open up the heavens up the heaven. over me. Over. Say it again. Raise your hand. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Power. power, open up the heavens over, the heaven. over, me. over me. Open heavens. Over the Point to the heavens. Say, I decree it. I decree. Point one finger. Say, I decree it. Pastor Eli, that's all power you got. Say, I decree it. I, decree it. I, declare, it. I declare it. Open heavens open. over me. In Jesus' name. Say, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare and I decree. Point your hands to the heavens. Open heavens over me. Over me. Over me. Over me. Over me. Over me. In Jesus' name. Say in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands. Say in Jesus' name. Willie Countryman, say over me. Willie Countryman, say over me. Own restaurant. Raise your hands. Say, Lord, I thank you for the day. I will have my own restaurant. Lord, I thank you for the day. I will have my own five-star restaurant. Say, God, not just a restaurant, a five-star restaurant. Say, God, over me. Lift your hands higher. Say, over me. Say, over me. You believe it? You believe it? Start writing on your envelope your own five-star restaurant. Start writing that on the envelope. Your own five-star restaurant. Can God do that? You believe? Have you ever wanted your own restaurant? Come in the middle. Have you ever wanted your own restaurant? Have you ever wanted your own restaurant? What kind of restaurant? What kind? Can God do it? Can God do it? Is it done? Woo, go Willie. Go Willie. And we'll come. We coming to eat at that five-star restaurant. We coming to eat at that five-star restaurant. Why are you pointing at him? He actually just wants a Michelin star restaurant. A Michelin? What's a Michelin star? That's the highest, that's the highest level. Ooh. How you know that? How you know that? I know, but I mean not the Michelin. I mean, like, how you know that's what he wants? Amen. Amen. Can God, y'all? Can God. Amen. We thank God for it. So we thank God for it. I keep dropping envelopes in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hassan. Say, Hassan. Your five star coming too. Whatever you believe in God for. Say, it's coming. Say, stay faithful. Say, stay in place. Say, God got the best for you. Say, God got the best for you. Say, Hassan, God got the best for you. Y'all believe that? Clap your hand if you believe that. In Jesus' name. Grab somebody's neck. Don't grab their neck. Give elbow high five. Something in the atmosphere. Keep your mask on. Keep your mask on. Give them a high five. Something in the atmosphere. Keep your mask on. Don't say, I made you sick. Keep your mask on. Just watch me as I live, dream, yeah. Fly higher than man's opinion. And like a bird, just call me an eagle. Fly up so high, I can't see people. My drive's so Every game I touch, yeah.
Just call. 